Our first cohorts in the Journalism Creators Program have included veteran journalists as well as younger journalists from around the world. We've worked with a Marine Corps veteran as well, an NPR former executive producer, a restorative justice pioneer, a couple of TEDx speakers, an anthropologist, and people in a whole range of different fields around media and journalism. And they've all committed to serving niche communities, underserved communities, to help fill information gaps. The Pacific Northwest of the United States is defined by the waterways as much as its infamous forests and rain. Here, where the mountains rise above the Salish Sea, the maritime community remains prevalent, but at a crossroads. On these waterways, environmental, political, and commercial concerns collide. There's a rich history of indigenous people living along these shores that continues to the present. The biodiversity, including salmon and southern resident orcas, are threatened and under strain. Washington State also includes the third largest commercial port in North America, the largest state ferry system in the country, and is home to the North Pacific fishing fleet. As a lifelong boater, enthusiastic sailor, and writer, my new venture will cover what comes next for this region. Connecting professional mariners with recreational boaters, marine scientists, and invested residents. Starting with research guides and an analysis of global maritime innovation trends, I will expand through audience input and curiosity. My mission is to dismantle silos, slowing down progress towards a sustainable, equitable future for the Pacific Northwest Maritime community. Over the past few years, more and more people have grown concerned with what social media are doing to their power and what this is doing to society. Yet, the advice they tend to get when they voice their concerns is a simple, just get off Facebook or delete your social media entirely if you're not down with the way that they run their business. Yet, a growing number of experts, researchers and academics don't think that it has to be this way and they're finding different and new approaches to build a more healthy and community-centered internet. My newsletter wants to bring their approach and their theories to an Italian audience because knowledge doesn't have to be stopped by geographical borders. There are roughly 2 million people incarcerated in the United States. That's the size of a small country with almost no real journalism coming from inside to show what happens to people behind bars. My project, the Prison Journalism Project, aims to change that. We're an educational and publishing initiative that seeks to train incarcerated writers in the tools of journalism so they can tell their stories within their own communities. Stories that go beyond the crimes that make up so much of the conversation surrounding criminal justice. Stories about prison economy, friendship, food, mental health, and yes, even the odd story on stamp collecting and contraband onions. Through our publishing platform, they get their stories out to the world, and we hope will help change the narrative when it comes to mass incarceration. A little over a year ago, I was working on loosely connected journalistic projects, yearning for something that would reignite my passion for journalism and storytelling. A grant led to a podcast, and that again led me to the CUNY Creators Program. And suddenly I feel like I'm a true journalist again, helping my listeners and readers answer the question that I've been asking myself for all of my career. How can we know what is true? And while this question remains unchanged, the urgency with which we ask it is growing with every day. We know that there is more false information being spread than ever before, and we know that it's being used to bend and break the basis of our democracies. To help our audience understand disinformation, I've started a podcast, The Inoculation, and a newsletter, Inoculated, to show how vaccine disinformation is shaping politics. Hi, my name is Paulo. I live in the Brazilian Nortes, the region of the country with the lowest human development index and the majority of news deserts. The using of data journalism in Brazil is very concentrated in Sao Paulo and Rio, the two major cities, and I want to bring it to this community to help it. So, what I will do in the next few weeks is create Catalan, a newsletter to help other journalists here to use these tools. 
I also will collaborate with these small independent news organizations here to help them to use this kind of technology in their investigations.